Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Good, amen. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Let's get everybody stand up real quick. Let's sit for a second. Stand up and shake yourself a little bit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just want to give the Lord an opportunity to, to minister to our hearts. And, uh, give us what you would have for us to have tonight. And glory to God. Just lift up your hand before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this yes, amen. opportunity to speak the word of God. Father, we thank you for each person under the sound of my voice, glory to God. We thank you, Father, that your word is alive, it is quick and sharp and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the divide of the sun of the soul and spirit and of the, and of the joints and the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Father, I thank you right now that, that the people of God are, are, are waiting in expectation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We just thank you, Amen. Heavenly Father, that Amen. not an expectation of a man, but an expectation of you. Yes. And Father, we, I, I decrease right now that you might increase in me. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just invite you to, to have your way through through these through these this ministry. <clears throat> have your way during this service. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We invite you to move up and down the aisles. And touch hearts and minds. Give us give us clear thought. Give us a reset of uh, ears that hear, hearts that are receptive, Father. And we just thank you right now that your word will have free course in our midst today. And we thank you, Father, that nothing will be done to quench the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, you, I, I, again, you are, you are a gentleman, and, and we invite you in to have your way today. And we just thank you for this opportunity to, to be called a, a son of God, a child of God. And we just thank you for all the people of God and the, and the ministry of the word. And all in agreement with that prayer said. Amen. 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 Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let it be as it was spoken. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. God is good. Amen. 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 How's everybody doing tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we're so glad that all of you could make it out tonight on Wednesday night. And, of course, uh, the announcement was made Sunday that I would, I would be ministering. And, of course... You know, it is. It, you know, as 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 the, as one of the assistants. You know, you just sometimes you're just like, well, you know, maybe a couple people show up. You know, Pastor done said all the people ain't gonna be here, so you know, you know, as, as in, you know, the, the devil try to tell you all kind of stuff. You just heard and stuff. Well, you might get one person show up beside your wife. <laughs> so well, good. When two or three are gathered, you know, in my name, they're in my yeah. midst. You know, so with that, that, that that's good. That's good numbers right there. Yeah. Glory to God, Hallelujah! But you know, I I, I have learned uh, through uh, watching watching other ministers and ministries and, and, and gleaning from other great great people of God who who preach this gospel a lot longer than I have. You know that you you prepare just like you're preaching to thousands. You know you and, and, and whether it's it's four or four thousand or four hundred, you preach the same. You know, the, the word, the ministry of the word is the most important thing that you can ever do in your life. Is you because you're speaking life to, to, to God's people. You're you're being yielded to the to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And you are speaking words of life. Jesus said, My words they are spirit and they are life. And so, you know, when you're speaking the word of God, you're speaking life to people. And so in a, in 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 a in a dark and dying world, we need life. We Amen. need life. Amen. We need life. Amen. Because there's always always circumstances and things going on that's going to cause us to be surrounded by darkness. Mm -hmm. And so the light of God on the inside of us is going to be a beacon. And it's going to, you know, my, my responsibility as a minister of the gospel is to charge you up in the spirit so you can go out to a dark, dark and dying world and be a light. Amen. Amen. Be effective. Be a witness for Christ. Amen. Amen. Somebody, you know, because you know, see, you meet people all the time. They are, you know, they're, 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 they're beat down. They're, they're wore out. They're frustrated. They're disgusted. You know, all kinds of sorts of people that you meet every day. Amen. And we are to be light to those people. Amen. And of course, if you haven't been charged up in the Word of God, you know you're not going to be a very effective witness yourself. 
And so yeah. you want to stay stay prayed up, stay full of the word, stay full of the spirit of God so you can be a light. Amen. 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 And so, you know, that's my responsibility to uh, to help charge you up, to 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 help you be uh, uh, girded up in the things of God. Amen. Amen. And so, of course, uh, we're piggybacking up off of what we preached on uh, the last time we were with you. Um, we were talking about uh, an unshakable faith, but we're talking about the walking into God's divine purpose for your life. Amen. Amen. And so, um, you know, been praying and seeking God and saying, okay, well, Lord, where do I hook back up to this thing, you know, to, to, to bring us on in? Because, you know, it's, uh, you know, but as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. So, you know, I want to be led by the Holy Spirit to, to, to get right where I'm supposed to be at and to drop right in that thing like a needle in a record, boom, you know, and just flow right in, you know. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful thing that, that we have, that we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. John 16, 13 says, How be it when the Spirit of truth comes, he shall not speak of himself. Uh, but whatsoever things he shall share, what, what, whatsoever things he shall, shall hear, that shall be speaking. It will show you things to come. And so we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, and so I'm trusting, and I want you to trust along with me that the Spirit of God will steer me and lead me down the direction that He wants us to go tonight. Now, of course, I have notes. I, I prepared. I, I know about the direction I'm believing. I think He wants us to go in. But you know, I want to give the Holy Spirit license to direct and adjust as He sees fit. Amen. 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 And I want you to pull on me as as the Lord begins to to direct me. And take you take me down the street that you need to be on, you know, because there are lots of lots of little places that we can hit just in this short little time frame. But we want to be accurate, amen. amen. You know, we want to be like an arrow. You know, you take that arrow and you you're gonna hit one target, boom. You know, amen. but you know sometimes you know you you would like you don't want to do you do a shotgun. You hit a lot of a lot of things, you know, in one shot. You know, <laughs> well sometimes you want to be an arrow, sometimes you want to do a shotgun. You know, but. Whatever the Lord wants us to do, that's that's what we want. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Amen. So, we're talking about walking in God's divine purpose for your life, and um, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Let's go there. Amen. Sorry, uh, text scripture. First Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, we are laborers together with Christ. And there is a plan and a purpose that God has for each one of us. Amen? Amen. And as our responsibility, yes, you do have a responsibility to find out what it is the Lord wants you to do. See, because people spend their whole lives just doing what, you know, what comes to their mind. You know, you, know, you people are like, well, you know, I tried this for a while and now I'm going to try this. And, you know, you know, I tried nursing, but that really didn't work out. So now I'm going to do truck driving, you know, <laughs> you know, and people are just all over the place. You, you know, I, I have Facebook and I see friends and stuff, you know. You know, they first had one one thing, and then they start saying, "Okay, well, you know, now I'm getting ready to do this now." I'm like, you know, and and that's fine, you know, but is it fine? Because see, when you're a Christian, you have the ability to know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Amen. You have the ability because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, and He's taking a resident on the inside of you to lead you and guide you in all truth. Amen. about what you're supposed to be doing with your life. So if you find yourself in a pattern where I don't really know what I'm supposed to do, you know, I'm just, uh, you know if you find yourself there, you need, to, you need to fall back and punt. You know, you need to fall back and you need to say, well, Lord, what is it I'm supposed to be doing? You know, because, see, you don't want to be spinning your wheels and, you know, and your life is unproductive. And, and of course, you're not going to, your life is not going to resemble anything of great victory because you're you're out of place, you're out of kilter. 
So we're talking about walking in, in, in God's purpose for your life. And, uh, you know, nothing, nothing takes, takes, takes God by surprise, you know. And things shouldn't be taking us by surprise as well. Because mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, mm -hmm. leading you and guiding you. And, of course, you know, it says over in 1 Peter 5 and 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Mm -hmm. you're, you're falling back and saying, okay, Lord, not my will, but your will. You know, not my way, but your way. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to get in. It's, it's possible to get in front of God. You mm -hmm. know, because because He gives you your own will. Right, right. And a lot of times you're just like, well, this 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 seems good for me to do, and you just you're just out there, and then you get so far out there, and it gets dark, and all you hear is the crickets in the background, <laughs> and you're sitting there like, you know, now you don't now you don't left the pavement. You know, now you're now you're out in the sticks in the woods, and then now you hear the owls, woo -woo, woo -woo, you know, and then now you you out there now, you start hearing stuff, the wolves start talking to you. <laughs> woo -woo -woo -woo. you oh, 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 you was out here now, <laughs> and some Christians are out there now because they went too far without checking. Lord, you know, I took a left turn in Albuquerque. <laughs> you know, remember Buzz Bunny? I took a, I took a, I turned it out of the cookie and said, so now you, now you out there, you know, you out there with the wolves and the bears and the tigers and you know everything that wants to eat you. You know, the Bible says, as a roaring lion, the devil walks around seeking whom he may devour, and he may devour you if you get out there by yourself too long. Amen. And so you don't want to be praying for the devil, you know. You, 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 we, we're confessing and believing, okay, yeah, the devil's under my feet. But yeah, that's if you stay in, in God. You have to stay in Christ. Mm -hmm. And you have to stay obedient to what he told you to do. So you, you qualify to be up under the shelter of his wings. You know, see, his wings are, are, are broad and spread wide. You know, but you can get from up under them. You, like, you start getting wet. You start getting the elements on you. You start realizing I'm not I'm not in God no more. You know, you find yourself in places you ain't got no business. You know, places of retro, retro uh, uh, ill repute. Yeah, that's a that's a fancy uh, old term for saying in the strip club. <laughs> you know, you find yourself there. You know, you're like whoa. You you do you at the bar having a having a uh, Jim Bean? You know, you you out you out there now. You out there with the wolves, and you may be devoured. You know, does that mean that God doesn't love you? Does that mean that you're forsaken and you can't come back? No, it doesn't mean that. It means it's time to it's time to come back to your true love. Come back to the one who has your best interest at heart. And we're not talking about anyone else here. We're talking about somebody watching by by the video there. Everybody, everybody in here is, is, is in God. Everybody is, is covered under the blood. Amen. We, nobody here is doing that. Nobody. You that's watching. Get yourself back in the things of God. Amen. <laughs> we are talking just to you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, like I said, some people live their whole lives and never know what they're created to do. You know, you were thinking, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you, make, you make a bad decision. We have all been there. You made a bad decision, you know, and you find yourself in some predicament. You know, if you live long enough, this will happen to you. You find yourself in a predicament. Do, can I get a witness any, anywhere in the building tonight? Has, has anybody ever made it, made a decision and found yourself in a predicament? I know that I have. Amen. You know. You know why? And you say to yourself, "Well, why did this happen? You know, what happened here? You know, you're doing a time of reflection, a time of you know looking back over your life and stuff like that. Well, you know, the Lord will tell you." You know, well, you if if you'll be if you'll be honest and you and you get with him, he said if you, if any of you lack wisdom, you know he gives all men liberally and he upbraids not. He doesn't hold anything back. Amen. Amen. You know, if you need if you need to, if you need to know from the Lord, he'll tell you. Yes. You know, now he he won't necessarily tell you when you ask him because you may not be ready for the answer yet. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, sometimes you're just not mature enough to be able to handle the, you know what he's gonna tell you. So sometimes you gotta put a little time on it. 
you know, to let you marinate for a little while. <laughs> you know, get a little more maturity, a little more seasoning about your about your walk in him. And sometimes he just doesn't tell you, you know, to allow you to 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 grow and trust him more. You know, because see, sometimes he just doesn't. You know, sometimes he would tell you, and you're just like, oh, I don't know that. I don't know if that was the Lord. Well, but you'll see. Put some time on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Time will answer that question for you. Now, of course, you know, he's leading us. You know, he's guiding us if we trust him. Amen. And we have to we have to have an established relationship with him in order to trust him. You know, I was talking to a young lady the other day and, you know, she we found out that she had um, diabetes and that, uh, you know, you know, we were ministering to her and saying, you know, the Lord will heal you, you know, Jesus has died for your sins, he's died for your, your physical healing in your body, you know, but, you know, the Lord checked me, he said, she's not ready for that. She's, she's not ready for that. Well, what do you mean she wasn't ready for that? Who's not ready for healing? Well, you're not ready for it if your mind is going to put up a wall that, you know, this, this, this can't work for me or according to my my uh, understanding people that have you know I have allowed people to talk to me and you know what the doctor said and all of that you know because see people have backgrounds and history and stuff that has formed an opinion with them and we all have that I call it a filter you know everything that we hear and are uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? People that we, uh, you know, we have um, experiences, you know, create filters that, you know, we run everything through. You know, all sorts of information comes through our life's filters. And so, you know, you could say, okay, well, a, a case in point, you know, if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to plant, plant cucumbers, you know, you have a certain certain experiences and, and life life things have happened that will determine whether or not you can understand I can grow cucumbers you know or you say okay well I know I can't grow cucumbers because I killed the, the tomatoes I tried to grow you know well see so you based on whether or not you can grow cucumbers based on how you were or were not able to grow tomatoes okay same thing with what we're talking about concerning healing this young lady I said I said, here's what the Lord is saying. You are not ready. You need to hear the word of God. You need to get in a good church that teaches and preaches and understands that healing is for today. Healing is for you today. Jesus died for your healing right now, today. You need to hear that on a consistent, regular basis in order to build up your faith, build your faith up concerning that. So, it's just like, and I, and I gave her the analogy, it's just like I just told you, we just, meet, we just met for the first time, you don't know me from Adam. I said, miss, you know, I feel prompted to, uh, I, 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 feel prompt, I felt prompted to do this for you. Um, you need to go down to Crown, uh, Crown Nissan and go speak to the manager, tell them uh, your name, tell them my name, and that I have... Uh, bought you a car and you'd like your car now. I spent $30,000 on you a car and uh, you're here to pick it up. You would look at me like, are you crazy? <laughs> what wagon did you just fall off of? <laughs> I know you didn't just spend $30,000 on me a car. Why? Why does she feel that way? She don't know me. She don't know me. She don't have any experience with, you know, with anything. She's the first time meeting me. She don't know me. She don't even know if I got ten dollars, much less thirty thousand dollars. Then I'm, and then I'm gonna spend it on a car for her. And my wife's standing right there, you know. And and and, and I ain't done the same for her. She don't know, me, right? Well, that's the same thing with the things of God. You know, you have to have an established relationship with God. And and and, and of course, this is not to disqualify or discount that. God does miraculous things all the time according to his own good pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, but this is what the word that I have for this young lady. Mm -hmm. And many times this is what happens to people. They don't have 
a an established relationship with the Lord and you know they don't know that it's God's will for them to have it and first of all you gotta have you gotta know that it's God's will that you have a thing amen, amen. amen. and so you know walking in God's purpose for your life amen, amen. we need to understand that we need to have a relationship with the Lord so that he can we can we can be able to trust him and let him direct us as he as he has built a relationship you know he and how do we know that he's directing us and guiding us well you have an established track record of things that he has done for you. well he healed you of your you know your your toe when you stubbed your toe you know he paid your light bill you know you know you know you didn't have the money you know you you looked up and you got a you got a text message that said the bill was paid I, I didn't I didn't pay that bill. you know you didn't pay the bill you know they were gonna cut it off Wednesday but then you got a text message you know thank you for your payment hmm? thank you for your payment right? and then you start asking well, did you pay it no I didn't pay. you know I, you already, I already told you I ain't had no money to give you know? so you know God will touch somebody's heart you know so you have a history a track record of things that the Lord has done for you that you know it was God see when God do things for you you know it was God that done it for you he touched somebody's heart and they moved and it got done amen, amen. and so you build up a rapport you build up a history of believing and trusting God through experiences that you have amen amen, amen. so let's look at Psalm 23 and 3 he restores my soul he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, a lot of times things are going on in our minds and stuff. You know, the devil's fighting us. See, that's where the battlefield most of the time happens in your mind. You know, thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. The devil brings those things to you 24-7, telling you, you're not this, you can't do this, or this is about to happen to you, da 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 All kind of negative things going on all the time. You know, but God is there, and, and if we put our, he said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So, you want to refocus when, that, when all that rah, rah, rah is going on, you know, you know, accusing you and, and telling you not this and all the things that, that the devil tries to do to you. Refocus. Center your mind and your thoughts on what the, the, the Spirit of God, the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit. That'll quiet a lot of that stuff down. Now, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen like that. And sometimes it will. But if you if you commit yourself to praying in the Spirit, it'll shut up them voices. It'll shut them voices down. Because the devil can't stay around the Spirit of God very long. Amen. That's right. The Bible says resist the devil. And he will flee. And one of the, the strongest resistance you can put up is praying in the Holy Ghost. You start praying in the Holy Ghost, and that, and 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 your your spirit man starts getting built up and undergirded, and before you know it, it's it, it's all thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, thank you. You, you look around, the devil is way you can't even tell he was even in the room no more because <laughs> he's gone. Amen. And that's how you get the devil on the run. Amen. You focus yourself around the things of God. You rally around His Word. You start praising and thanking Him. You start giving Him the glory in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. And He'll get He'll get the step. He'll get, he'll, he'll get some air up on them. He'll get on about it. Amen. Amen. And you have to do that. You have to know what. You, 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 these are one of the weapons of our warfare. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you got to be able to use it. Amen. Amen. Now God wants to get the glory out of your life. He does great things in your life to show others how good He is. Amen. And uh, let's see. Oh yeah, 2 Timothy 3 and 12. And then verse 14. Yea, all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. James 1 and 2. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. 
but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. James 1 and 2 through 4. Be in faith during every aspect of any trial that you may find yourself in. Keep your armor on at all times because you, 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 you're in a war. You're in a battle. The devil's trying to kill you. He wants to take your head off. But you know, you got the victory. Amen. 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 You got the victory. Hallelujah. Say that with me. I have, I have the victory. The victory. The victory. I, have I have the victory. The victory. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. And I will not quit. And I will not quit. Because I have the victory. Because I have the victory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now we want you to be in faith. During every and all aspect, aspects of any trial that you may find yourself in, keep your armor on at all times of the battle. Do not take your helmet off because it got hot. <laughs> you know, ooh, boy, it's hot in this, this bucket. You know, you just sitting there, you just, <sighs> it's hot in here. Ooh, it's hot in here. Let me take my helmet off. Well, the devil wouldn't know you take your helmet off. You take your helmet of salvation off. Guess what? You get your head chopped off. Amen. Keep your, keep your arm on at all times. Amen. Amen. Don't set your weapon down because it got heavy. When you sit your weapon down, you have just conceded your defeat. You are about to become a casualty of war. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, you know, Abraham, he was called the father of faith. But he was also the father of Ishmael. Now, you know, we're, we're making an analogy here. You know, yes, Abraham was a father of faith, but he made an Ishmael. And many of you have made a spiritual Ishmael with your life and some choices that you've made. You know, but does that mean that you can't you can't rebound back from that? No, we're not saying that. We're not saying that. But you know, Ishmael can cause you a problem at times. You know, of course, you know, he was a thorn in Abraham's side and still still thorn now. You know, the seed of Ishmael. You know, but you know what? God is telling us these things because not to point out that you're going to have things go wrong in your life, but who he is. He is the deliverer. He is the one that undergirds you. He's the one that bridges the gap over your troubled situation and circumstances. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Joseph. Uh, let's turn to Genesis 37. 37, 1 through 18. Genesis 37. <coughs> Let's look down here at third verse. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age and he made him a coat of many cover, colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Man, they, you know, that's, this, is, this is what they call hating on somebody. They were hating on Joseph. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And they said unto him, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf uh, arose, and it stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheep. And his brethren said unto him, Should I indeed reign over us, bro? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the living stars made obeisance to me. And he told this to his father and his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and, my, and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves? bow down ourselves to thee and to, to the earth. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Mm. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. Now, as we, as we talked about a little earlier, sometimes, you know, you have circumstances happen because, uh, you know, other people have gotten involved. And then sometimes you can do, do damage to your own self. And in this scenario right here, you know, of course, Joseph's brethren, you know, his brothers, they, they sold him into slavery, threw him in the pit. You know, they were about to kill him. You know, really, they were just about to kill him. They were like, you know, we done had it up here with Joseph. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and, and kill him now. You know, because he talking about, 
how we're going to be bound down to him and you know he going to be they already could see that he was a favorite son you know huh, daddy always doing stuff for him always let him borrow the car and, you know let him you know or you know give him money every time to go to the store and buy you know treats and you know chocolate and stuff like that you know give him the best uh best horse to ride and all that you know they already mad now but see Joseph brought some of that hate on himself because he didn't realize he don't need to say everything <laughs> you don't need to say everything that's exactly right you know you need to keep some stuff you know sometimes it's just good you shut your mouth you know I mean because you know you are you you especially your family member you know you know your family you know and they're already hating on you already you know now you're gonna say yeah man you ain't gonna have nothing I'm gonna have it all you know that's really going to inspire love and appreciation for you you know you know that's basically you know what was going on there you know so you know this example is in the word of God to, to, to remind us that you know we need to you know you don't need to you don't need to see it all you know then what is that scripture you gave me for that over in uh, yeah Psalm 141 and 3 turn down we're about, we about done Try to wrap this up. One forty-one and three. Says, so "Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Help me to shut up sometimes. You know. The Bible also says a fool is known by as much speaking. You know. And and in this instance, you know, yes, yes, God had a plan to save Joseph's brethren." He had a plan to, to rescue them. You know, the, the famine was coming. You know, but Joseph had to go through some stuff. You know, before that come to pass. You know, was it God's desire that those bad things happened to Joseph? No. But he still had a plan in all of that. But, you know, you know, you, you and your big mouth sometimes, you know, you might help to precipitate some things that happen to you. You know. So what do you do? Lord, help me not to talk so much. You know, everybody's not everybody's not cheering you on. Like, Yay, we just love you. Hmm. you know? yeah. And of course, Jesus already said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Mm -hmm. so, so get ready. You know, so, but don't sit there and do this to yourself. You know, inspire the hate. You know, <laughs> you inspire them to hate on you. You know, yeah, all y'all suck. You know. <laughs> Y'all suck, you know. Can't none of y'all shoot no basketball. I'm better than all of y'all. <laughs> you know, just, just 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 inspiring somebody to hate yeah. you. You know, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Have some wisdom. You know, yeah. what the scripture says. You know, ask the Lord to help you to say the right things at the right time. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Is anybody getting anything out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Husbands and wives. Pray and ask God to help you not to be a hindrance to the plan of God on your spouse's life. Whatever, you know, the Lord is, is calling you or your spouse to do, you know, don't, don't allow yourself to be a hindrance. This applies both ways. When you interfere or begrudge how God is using your spouse, you cut off your own blessing. Now, this is fresh off the Holy Ghost right here. We all have wants, dreams, and desires, but we want to make sure that those things are in line with his will, his desire and his plan. Many have said, well, I'm not on board with that because that doesn't, doesn't line up with what I'm wanting to do. You know, you're being selfish. You know, but that's not, you, you, you're plucking down your own house when you do that. Your spouse is not your disciple. He or she is the disciple of Jesus first. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. amen. And you want your spouse to be submitted to the Lord Jesus and you want him to love God, him or her to love God more than they love you. Because when they line up to what God tells them to do, they're not going to do anything to mistreat you that's because right. that's in contradiction to what the Lord will have in his word. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we are to honor and respect one another. Husband, love your wife. Wives, submit to your husband. So, you know, if you're doing something contrary, 
to your spouse, you're not in obedience to the word of God. You can't say, you know, I love you, Lord, and then you're treating your spouse any kind of way. You forget it. You, you are what we call a hypocrite. So, but anyway, we're not going to spend too much time here. I want everybody to still be happy. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're a happy, clappy church. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Sometimes Satan will backdoor you into sin. Amen. You know, and what I mean by that is, you know, like smoking or any other addictive substance makes you violate God's command of love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Anything, anything that has a hold on you that you have to, you have to partake of it, and you just, you know, it's just one, it's one of those vices. You know, what is a vice? A vice clamps onto you and holds you. Amen. You know, so what's just say, you know, it's just one of those vices that I have. Well, you know. That's not of God, and you want to you want to pray and ask the Lord to help you get rid of that, Amen. And He'll do that, Amen. Amen. You know, be careful of falling into sexual sin. Pornography is a sin all by itself. However, Satan has cloaked it by using animation. You know, you see, you know, the cartoons and stuff now. You know, and and many, and of course, we're not talking anybody here. <laughs> we're talking nobody here. We're talking for folks right here. Right there. You know. And saying this is not a real person, you know, the <laughs> Satan has cloaked it by using animation and saying this is not a real person that you're looking at. So where's the sin in that? Hmm. The Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Don't let the devil outflank you. There are times when the devil will push, push you over into the other ditch by puffing you up with knowledge. You know, and I'm going to try to share this real quick. But, you know, I have a friend, he has a, we went down to see them the other week. And he's got a brother. And, you know, they're off in this, this uh, uh, it's, it's kind of, it's supposed to be like a, another branch of Christianity. <laughs> right. <laughs> But anyway, you know, they, they're supposed to acknowledge Jesus, they, but they, they, they got all kind of different terminologies and stuff, and I'm like, y'all in the cult. But anyway, <laughs> you know, but they, you know, you can't, when somebody's, when somebody's willfully deceived, you know, there's, there's no bringing them out of that. You know, they, they, they have committed themselves to thinking that this is the right way to go without letting the word qualify what this is you're trying to believe. You know, you just believe this stuff because, you know, it seems like a good idea. It's man's wisdom. And, you know, it's all this, all these different things you're doing, a bunch of rituals and stuff like that. But you have absorbed all the power of God out of what you're doing because there's no word. The, the power is in the word of God. And, and when you take the word of God out of, you know, out of, out of the realm of what you're doing, you're out there by yourself. You're out there in the woods. You're out there with the crickets. You're out there in the sticks. You have left the beat. You have left the path. And you out there by yourself, amen? But anyway, you know, they get all caught, you know, with these different doctrines and stuff like that that don't line up to the word. And, you know, people are doing this all the time, you know. But don't get yourself off there with, off, out there with them. You stay on the word, amen? You come back to the word. Well, brother, sister, I understand what you're saying. Uh, not really, but show me that in the word. Show me where the word of God is talking about that, and, and and not just one isolated scripture, because you can you might be able to find one. Yeah, give me give me two or three. The Bible says, "In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word, every word be established," mm -hmm. and that's where the safety is right there, because there there's a safety net placed in this word to qualify itself. Mm -hmm. you, so you just, so you just can't can't pull a Jim Jones on somebody. Yeah, you know, you know, we're just gonna do this and drink this Kool Aid, and the Lord bless you, you know. <laughs> but anyway, you don't want to just find yourself in this in this scenario where you just out there believing all kinds of nothing, you know, and then you know you you wake up one day it's like well well what do I believe? You don't even know because you've been tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. You want to stay with the word, amen. Amen. You want to stay with God's word. That is right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're gonna to have to cut it off right there. But uh, but before we close out, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, you understand that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure 
that whatever it is that you're doing, that the, the peace of God is there while you're doing it. Because see, that's a, that, that, that's a good acid test for the determining, well, is this what I'm supposed to be doing or not? Whether it's ministry, whether it's something going on in your family, something going on in the job, wherever the peace of God, it says, seek peace and pursue, the Bible says. Find that peace and go in that direction where the peace is at. And you'll have safety in this in, in, in your walk. And and God has a has a platform to direct you on. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so there may be somebody listening this evening saying, okay, well, I, I you know, I've allowed some things and circumstances to get me off course. And I want to get I want to get back right. I want to get steered back right on course. Uh, you know, I've, I've allowed some situations, circumstances, and things to interfere with the direction God wanted me to go in my life. If that's you in this place, and we want to pray with you, we want to agree with you that the Lord will redirect and refocus you and get you back right where He wants you to be. Amen. Because that is His will. Yeah. You know, the the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He delights in your way. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible also says. You know, a, a good man falls seven times. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that it's not just, you know, man, men, you know, say that the ladies like, yeah, just y'all men falling. <laughs> no, 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 mankind, mm -hmm. mankind, amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if that's you in this place tonight, I would love to pray with you. You know, we're going to touch and agree that God will steer you back in the right direction. You'll hear the voice of the Lord clearly what you need to be doing, and you can get back right where you need to be. If there's anybody in the place, you know, just come on down. We'd be happy to pray and believe God with you because he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Mm -hmm. If there's anybody, we're, the, 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 the floor is open, and we'd love to have you come down and pray. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, all right. Um, I believe... I have said everything that the Lord wants me to say tonight. We're going to turn it back into the hands of dear pastor. Thank you so much. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.